Happy New Year everyone! Today I'm going to go through my 2023 predictions for board gaming. Didn't do necessarily too well last year, you can go and see the video I just did recently about my predictions for last year. So let's see if I can make five predictions for this year and see if I can do a little bit better. So first of all, I'm going to carry one over from last year, and that is that Ticket to Ride Rome will be a thing. Now, I think that the Ticket to Ride sort of miniature series, where they visit a city and make it a thing, they've done New York, London, Amsterdam, that sort of stuff, San Francisco, well, they've been to America, now let's come back to Europe and do Rome. I think that is a big city that sort of could do with a sort of ticket, small Ticket to Ride game. I think it would sell really well with tourists, that sort of thing. It just makes sense to me. Maybe it doesn't to Asmodee because I guessed it last year and it didn't happen, but yeah. Next up, I think that GameFound will become better than Kickstarter. And by better, I mean I think it will have the bigger and better games on it. I still don't think board gaming on Kickstarter is going away, but I think some of the bigger hitters, the ones that really get people excited. Now, I'm not taking anything away from the smaller games, but you know, the, where the main money is, I think that's going to move to GameFound. And a way to sort of maybe see if this prediction has come true is let's see if someone like Simon, Cool Minis or not, jumps ship and goes from Kickstarter to GameFound. A few big hitters have already done that. If they do it, it's not the final nail in the Kickstarter coffin, but it would certainly be a sign if someone, a big company like that, did jump over platform. But yeah, I think GameFound could be the new place to sort of crowdfund primarily for board gamers. At least, that's my prediction. Number three, I think that we will get a lot of reskins this year. Now, we've just kind of had Essen Spiel, the Azul Chocolate game. That's sort of probably going to come out now, um, sort of a bit more everywhere. There's already many versions of like patchwork. I can just see there's even sort of Great Western Trail. There's not quite reskins, but reskins. I think we're going to get a few more versions like this, where a sort of relatively popular game, like Look at Azul, massively popular, gets a new theme spin. A game that's, you know, maybe a few couple years old, two, three years old, and now they're just hitting the market again with what is effectively the same game. Now I'm going to say, let's see if five of these are released to sort of see if this prediction comes true, but I think we're up sort of that angle where some companies want to sort of semi-play it safe, re-hit the market with the same game, but just a different theme. Let's see if that happens. I kind of hope it doesn't because then we get more originality. I could see it though, and it could be a good way to maybe pick up a game that you missed out on the first time round. Number four, I think Restoration Games will announce a new IP for Unmatched. Now, they've got Jurassic Park, they've got the Marvel franchise, they've got Buffy, they've got sort of their own, not own ones, but sort of not IP based ones, including they've got like the Genie versus Houdini coming out. I think, though, that they will announce as one of the boxes for 2023 that that will be a new IP, an intellectual property that could be something epic. I mean, we all kind of want it to be like Star Wars or something like that, but let's see what we get. Maybe an avatar, you know, something that they're throwing around a little bit of the franchise, you know, you've got Avatar Lego or whatever, you've got Batman and DC games and stuff, Harry Potter games, could it? Could they sort of sign that sort of deal? I'd like to see it just to have sort of another angle of awesomeness to mash into Unmatched because I absolutely love it. Let's see if it comes true. Either way, we've got some Marvel boxes and non-IP boxes on the way this year. And last but not least, I'm going to say we're going to get more premium 
Roland rights. And by that, I mean we're sort of we're getting to a point where Roland rights are no longer just paper, pencil, and some dice. It's splitting. You either get the super cheap Roland rights, which are like print and play for a few dollars. You supply your stuff and you're off. Or you're getting the premium ones, which is almost flip and place like um, the Guild of Merchant Explorers, which you can see the review on the channel if you want to see that. We're getting that sort of stuff where it's no longer just roll a dice, write something on a sheet. It's Millie Fleury where it's drafting and placing stuff, but it's still got the logics of a roll and write. It feels like it could have been a roll and write at the start of the sort of playtesting process. I think that's where we're heading. We're getting that split. We're not going to get as many simple pad of paper and pencil. We're either going to get super cheap or we're going to get this sort of premium where it's not always just rolling and writing. It's sometimes rolling and placing or rolling and, well, drawing, but in sort of different ways with more expensive components, with more luxury in the box. You know, you've got those dry white boards, almost more standardised uh, in a roll and write than just the pad of paper. Let's see if that happens. I just get a feeling that's where we're starting to go with that split. Let's see if that continues. But let me know what you think is a good prediction for 2023, and we'll revisit this at the end of the year. Well, have a great year worth of gaming, and I'll see you next time.